Hey you folks, Quilly Team here, and welcome to Let's Try European Universalis 4 Cradle of Civilization. Cradle of Civilization is the latest expansion for EU4, and as per usual, it's also paired with a pretty substantial free patch. Some of the changes that are associated with Cradle of Civilization are part of the free patch, some of them are part of the paid expansion. Now, I am recording this before the official patch notes are out that really detail all the changes uh, in the free part and in the paid part. Uh, I think I've got most of it, but there's a possibility that I'll A, miss something, or B, uh, confuse something that's, you know, one versus the other. Cradle of Civilization focuses heavily on this area of the world, uh, both with a redrawn geography, new countries, countries that have been moved a couple places, um... A redesign of the Muslim religion mechanics and a new government type for the Mamluks and probably quite a few different things. Oh, there's some extra trade mechanics as well. There's some extra advisor mechanics. There's there's a lot of stuff going on here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and load up the Mamluks because we can take a look at their government type, which is a little bit funky. The map changes, of course, are based in the, the free patch that's included, so things have been shuffled up there. Um, the changes to the Muslim religion are also included in the free patch, but if you have Cradle of Civilization, there's going to be an extra couple of buttons in there to interact uh, with the, the Muslim religion. So... First change over here is we get this pop-up now when we start a game. This is reminiscent of something that was added in, in Crusader Kings 2 at some point, um, and was I thought thought was really handy over there. I think it's a lovely addition to the game here. Um, the first tab talks about your country, gives you a bunch of history and background and setting information about it, which I think is excellent. I mean, it, I, I don't know. Did they go and write something up like this for every single country in the game? Some some must have, like, less info or something. I, I don't know, but it's pretty amazing, actually, and I really appreciate that. Highlight some names of nearby countries that are kind of relevant as well, so you can sort of get a bit of a sense of the situation. Next tab over here is the Religion tab, letting us know the Mamluks are Sunni and what the Sunni faith modifiers are. Now, one of the things that has happened in this patch is Muslims always had a piety value, which could go from fully impious to fully pious. These, This has been renamed, this meter has been renamed, still the piety value, but now it ranges from mysticism to legalism. You're not just more or less pious, it's more of a, there's a different style to your piety. Um, whether it's more sort of centralized and autocratic, or more sort of loosey-goosey and mystical over here. Um, I think the values or the bonuses from each end are relatively similar to what, we, what was before. Um, well, no, they've actually been switched around because, like, the legalism end, which is on the right side, which used to be sort of the more um, pious side, um, has, I think, the higher tax dollars and tech and stuff like that. Um, so the order might have been swapped. Anyway, we'll take a look at that in a second. Um, now, down here, you'll see a section with a symbol. This points out that this is something that is introduced because of an actual expansion DLC, which you have. So you can see the symbol here of Cradle of Civilization. So because of Cradle of Civilization, all Muslim countries belong to a school that give different bonuses. So the top part, part of the expansion, or the, the patch, bottom part here, part of the expansion. Schools also uh, have opinions of each other to change during the course of the game and will have an effect on relations between the countries that follow them. We'll take a look at that in our religion tab. Countries following a school can invite scholars from other schools to combine their bonuses for 20 years. The school that I follow, the Shafi school, gives the following modifier plus one merchants, which, hey, is really good, especially the area we're in. Um, bonuses to trade is actually going to be pretty substantial. Next, we have the government tab over here. Now, the Mamluks start... If you have the expansion, Cradle of Civilization, the Mamluks start with a special Mamluk government type. Uh, as far as I know, they're the only persons with the Mamluk government type. I mean, it's right there in the name. However, if the Mamluks get eliminated from the game, another country of a certain government culture types, yada, 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 um, that controls, I think it's Cairo, uh, can then have a decision button to click to gain the Mamluk government type instead. So the Mamluk government is kind of interesting because you get these extra government interactions. It's also kind of odd because you don't have an heir. Instead, when your sultan dies, you get to pick from one of several candidate sultans. And there's this big mechanic in the Mamluk um, government where the candidates will be from different cultures within your country. The more provinces, the more prevalent that culture is in your country, the more you will accrue these special points 
that will let you hit these buttons over here for these special interactions. Promote ruler culture, sell slaves, recruiting from the ruler's culture. So you get some extra interactions based on that. So the more cultural support your ruler has, the more active these buttons are. However, because the upper echelons of your society are more threatened that is by a sultan that has a lot of cultural support, you know, popular support throughout the country, your legitimacy will start out lower. Slightly counterintuitive, but makes sense when you consider that legitimacy um, is very much the support of the aristocracy um, in a very significant way. And so they will be a little less supportive of someone who is... Um, you know, more powerful by being generally accepted by people, where if you're more of a fringe pre person um, without a lot of popular support, you're less threatening, so the aristocracy, you know, is very happy to prop you up on the throne um, so that they can be a little bit more active. And another note over here, that's the Cossacks expansion, which introduced the estates over here. An environment tab over here, nothing special in Africa. If you do start a, say, an Asian country, you'll get a um, description about the tributary system and things like that, because, of course, you've got the whole Ming blob thing going on. All right, let's go and take a look at, um, at a few of these tabs in here. First of all, the first tab over here, the court tab, lists our sultan over here. Again, notice he has no heir um whatsoever because that is not our mechanic notice for the advisors we have advisor culture and advisor religion slots over here um and that also translates to discounts excellent good example here these are both level one um advisors notice that this advisor over here is slightly cheaper than this one. Oh, it might be because he's older actually yeah they're both sunni and egyptian so it's actually not a good example what about one of the others any chance we've got it Right, he's level two, so it's a little hard to compare. Um, and he's uh, he's younger as well. Um, yeah, so, okay. We can't necessarily give a good example. But you can see here, we've got people here. This is Syrian, Syrian, Egyptian. So far, these are all Sunni. Will we get a Shia? Oh, there we go. Here's an example of a Shia advisor. A Syrian Shia advisor. Um, and so, there will be events that can now trigger based on the religious slash cultural match or mismatch between your advisors and yourself so that you know a little bit extra flavor in there sure that's fine i don't i expect that's not a particularly significant part of the game but i don't know what all the new events will be it could be that like no you really really want to avoid this particular combination because it's going to lead to really nasty events let's take a look at the government tab over here so again it's got sultan in it here if you mouse over it does list us as being a mamluk government we get a variety of um uh, factors in there uh, some of these are going to be shared with other government types and or not you know we'll need like a full like chart of things to see exactly like how special this government is versus others uh, you can see the monarch administrative skill plus two in there max promoted cultures plus three and a 50 percent discount to promote cultures cost is kind of interesting um, again, I don't know how that compares to other governments of this type in, you know, in this area or throughout the world. Um, but it is going to be very important with the Mamluks that you're going to want to support and accept many cultures. Um, and probably not do that much culture conversion. Although, you can. Because you can promote, um, different cultures. So, our Sultan, over here, um, is Sunni and Circassian. That's probably where we weren't seeing the discount, because it's not a discount based on accepted culture. It's a discount based on a match between our sultan and the advisors. So none of these guys were Circassian, so um, we're not going to be able to compare that. But, um, yeah, so over here we can, we can accept more cultures and that's fine. So one of the things we get is we do accrue administrative culture, diplomatic culture, and military culture over here. And it is based on our ruler, his admin score, um, and I think goes up if you have more cultural support in the country. I don't think we've got anyone who's Circassian, so presumably we're not getting any kind of bonus over there. Anywho, bonus over here, click this. Um, the amount of time that it lasts is based on the points you put in i think maybe not maybe it's always it's always static just 100 points hit the button so a year you get a discount of power cost which is great so time that about the time you want to pick up a technology for example really handy sell off slaves of your culture over here um but you would only you only gathered zero you have no circassian provinces so this button wouldn't be very powerful for us because we don't have any slaves of our culture to sell off because we have no provinces of our culture and then we can recruit from our cultural lands to get a manpower boost over here. But again, right now that value is zero because our Sultan doesn't 
doesn't have that kind of people in there. So you can already see the advantage of picking someone of a dominant culture in the land, despite the fact that you will start with lower legitimacy. I mean, it will go up over time, just like anything else. But yeah, it'll be low legitimacy versus high. And obviously, there's bonuses to having high legitimacies and penalties to having low legitimacy. So it's a balancing feature. Um, I thought there was something else. Uh, we've got our culture or our, our, um, our modifier tab. Yeah, I think that's fine. Diplomacy, I think, is unchanged. Economy, at a glance, is unchanged. Although, for army maintenance, we do have the new mechanic for drilling and army professionalism. And we'll take a look at that in just a moment. Uh, the trade screen here is unchanged, to the best of my knowledge. However, there has been a change to trade. If we go to a node where we've got a merchant, you'll see a variety of different buttons over here. This is... Um, an extra level of instruction that we can give to our merchant. So uh, the first option here is to maximize profit. This is the default option. It gives you 5% more trade node power. That's always very nice. You can also do hostile trading, which gives you a bonus to spy network construction in area. That's kind of nifty. The next one is possibly the single most potent uh, powerful ability. Oh, they did change it from the patch notes or from the dev diary quite a bit. If you have... 50% or more trade power in a trade node, you can click the button to improve inland routes. So you'll gather knowledge of the terrain in this node, which will benefit your armies. All provinces in this node, you get a plus 10% siege ability and a plus one artillery bonus versus forts. In the dev diaries, this was a straight up plus one bonus to combat all the time, which doesn't surprise me that they nerfed it because it's really powerful, especially since it was also only needed like 33% more trade power. Okay, so I mean, this is actually quite nice. Sieging faster is really nice to finish a war faster, to take in a lot less attrition. I mean, you know, it is still a very nice button to hit if you remember to hit it at wartime. Um, you can set your trading policy to establish communities which um, boosts to improve relations with everyone in this node. I like that. That is really cool. Now, this is a 15% improve relations bonus, which means that you still have to send a diplomat there to improve relations, um, but you will improve a little bit faster. Also, any effect that's decaying, so things like aggressive expansion, for example, that will decay faster. I mean, assuming I've got those details right with improved relations, but I'm pretty sure those are the things that that does. So it doesn't give you an immediate boost to the relationship with someone. It just makes it easier for you to get friendlier with them by, um, you know, burning off negative modifiers more quickly, for example. And then we've got another trading policy over here to propagate religion. Uh, we still need 50% more trade power over here, but it will work towards spreading, spreading the one true faith notes how many provinces can be converted um i'm not sure exactly because we haven't played it yet exactly how fast or potent this is uh but i think it's something not too dissimilar to how a um a center of reformation works to automatically convert over some provinces from time to time but it is a really powerful tool to help you convert areas over and it works all over i mean you can do it here but you can also work with it say um over here or in the new world presumably uh because i mean you can be you know this could be part of your colonial uh, colonization efforts which i think is kind of nifty over there i th think those are all the trade changes to mention here i think so i don't think i've forgotten anything all right let's go to the next tab over here what do we got Technology. As far as I know, the technology screen is unchanged, although we already know a couple of different ways to maybe get a, some extra discounts to your tech dropping, so that's that. Institutions, I don't think any real changes happen there. I mean, there might be some rebalancing notes in the patch notes, but again, I don't have access to them yet. Um, the ideas, as far as I know, are, I mean, overall pretty much the same. There, there might be a couple of ideas that have been tweaked here or there, you know, a couple of numbers changes, um, but I don't know as is. Missions and decision screen is basically the same. Again, there are going to be some decisions for some people to reform the Mamluk government or reform a special sort of Ottoman thing. It's like the empire of the of the something. I don't remember what it's called, but you, you can you can do that, which is, you know, always fun to do. And I'm always a fan of anything that lets you tag change. So now it's like, OK, I've got to run someone who can eliminate the Ottomans and then, you know, tag switch to some new trait, which is kind of cool. All right. Religion. So this one's definitely a one. So we are Sunni, but our school over here is the Shafi school over there. Now, as far as I can tell, well, I don't know where it tells us. Oh, there it is. 
we're the plus one merchant. So here we get a description of the Shafi, and here we get what it gives us, which is plus one merchants. And we do indeed start with three merchants over here, which is kind of nifty. Here's the button to invite a scholar from another school. Um, we do need, you know, some opinions for some things. You can see who it matters. Uh, it costs us some administrative power. Um, we've got to maybe be, you know, have a relationship with someone. So we don't have the ability to invite anyone from any particular school at this time, but you get to know exactly what you've got to do to do that. So that'll affect some of your relationship, um, choices going forward. Some of these, look at this 5% discount to administrative technology cost. That is unbelievably good. Probably because it lasts for 20 years. So it's probably worth spending the 50 admin especially if you're about to do a catch-up, like you've just like um, accepted an institution or something like that. Uh, some, you'll have to do the math in any particular situation to see if it like uh, uh, works out, but it's probably pretty good. Um, who, who has this? I mean, Crimea. I wonder if anyone else has this particular school um, because it would be nice to start with this, like always have the 5%. Well, it's just admin technology costs. It's not all technology costs, actually. Uh, so, hmm, interesting. Aggressive expansion impact, uh, that's the sort of thing I would like for my next Germany playthrough, jeez. Um, development cost discount, this is very nice. Again, do the math in a particular situation, but one of the most powerful things you can do with developing a province is to get an institution into that province faster. So push this button, spend the 50, um, and then save 10% development costs. That will really add up, because development costs are quite high. Oh yeah, there's a new button here to exploit development. So you can, like sack a point instead of boosting it you can sack a point of development um to get an instant boost of manpower of sailors or of money in case of emergency i find it very hard to believe that i would push this button unless unless i knew i was going to lose a province soon um in which case i might be willing to just rip it apart like uh is there a cooldown yeah there is a cooldown which I was going to say, you probably need one, but it still gives you an option if something's going to be run over and you think you're going to lose it. Other than that, I feel it's pretty unlikely that I would want to hit these buttons, but you know, that could happen. All right. So those are the schools over here. I don't think anything's changed in this particular area. Piety. We got some new art. And again, we've got the split instead of uh, pious versus impious. We've got legalism, which you can see if you get full legalism, you would get 20% um, more national tax, you would get 20% more national manpower, and a 10% discount to technology. If you go full mysticism, then here's where you get your missionary strength, your morale of armies, and your fort defense. Um, and you can mouse over here to see where your current state is. Now, if you get above a certain line, if you get at least above 75 towards legalism, or at least 75 towards mysticism, then you'll have these extra buttons you can push. Here it gives you a bunch of instant manpower. Here you get minus two to your corruption, which actually corruption is very expensive to bring down. So that's very powerful. However, um, it doesn't describe it here. In the dev diary, it says that once you hit this button, it swings you 50 back towards the middle. So if you were at 75 and you hit this button, it would drop you to 25. Here it doesn't tell you um, what the actual cost will be because the button's not lit up. Um, for all we know, it does cost a full 75, but in the dev diary, it did talk about costing you 50 to drop it. Still, very interesting that you've got these choices, and maybe you're deciding you're going to want to make a, a run towards mysticism. So you might want to just, you know, if you find yourself in the right situation, hit this button and then just get started on mysticism or vice versa. Anyway, um, these two buttons are only available, I believe, if you have the expansion. However, the new piety meter, which is the new description between legalism and mysticism and all the updated events to give a lot better flavor, uh, is part of the free patch. Military screen. Couple of new things here. First of all, we've got a button over here to slacken recruiting standards, which gives you instant manpower, but lowers our army professionalism by five. All right, what is army professionalism? I can't remember what tooltip it is. What's our ratio? Combat width, siege ability, forts. Where's our army? Oh, it's up here. Derp, derp, derp. I'm like, hold on. I've seen this before. Yes, it's up here. Here is our army professionalism. How dependent your country is on mercenary or professional armies. It increases by drilling units or recruiting generals, but decreases if you recruit mercenaries. So I love this idea because it is a meter that implies how much your country, yeah, just has a standing army that you work on all the time versus if you're just someone who purchases uh, mercenaries all the time. 
the nifty thing is, as this army professionalism bar goes up, you get a variety of bonuses along the way. Um, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, it's, it's not showing us in there. We can unlock things. So there's there's discrete, discrete bonuses you can unlock at higher levels of professionalism. So here you can see um, uh, you can build supply depots, which gives you supply... Uh, in a forward area, if I understand correctly. You can refill garrisons, so um, level up your... or f refill your forts really quickly. You can regain manpower when disbanding. Holy shit, this is something that I've been asking for forever. I mean, partially because the, like, I played Vicky 2 before I ever played EU4, and in Victoria, when you disband an army, your manpower goes back in your manpower pool. Well, here... If you have a professional enough army, that's what happens. You regain manpower. Now, it doesn't specify what the ratio is here. I don't know if you get all of it back or not, but you get some of it back when you disband your army. Uh, here, you get a 50% discount to recruiting generals. Wow. And then finally, full professional army over here. Reduced morale damage taken by reserves. Uh, An army drill gain modifier plus 100%. So you can, um, you can drill your troops much much more effectively and we'll look at the drilling in a second but if we mouse over the bar we can see that with our 10 percent uh, army professionalism we've got right now we get a huge discount to mercenary costs we also have more mercenaries available um there's the siege ability the land fire damage and the shock damage i believe those are just they, they will go up over time army professionalism here is the immediate gain so as you go up for every i believe for every percentage of army professionalism we will lose some of our recruit mercenary um discounts over here it's a little it's a little unclear but the idea being if you have low army professionalism you're very reliant on mercenaries so you should get a discount to mercenary costs and more mercenaries available so if you're a small rich nation you can more effectively use mercenaries but i feel as this goes up i think the idea is that the mercenary cost uh discount will go away but your troops will become more and more and more effective but um when you recruit mercenaries i believe it brings down your professionalism it's not entirely clear here i don't know if it'll say it somewhere um like when we hire mercenaries because that was the idea described in the dev diary um, I guess I could just hit the button and see. So we're at exactly 10%. So this is a mercenary regiment. We'll recruit a couple in there. I don't know if it goes down instantly. Here, we'll, uh, we'll let the game go. We'll get a few pop-ups, I'm sure. But let's see what happens when these pop in. Yep, there you go. Army professionalism has dropped slightly because we recruited some mercenaries. Because we are clearly not as reliant on our own internal troops over there. So, and then this button over here, Slack and Recruiting Standards, gets a bunch of manpower, but lowers our army professionalism, because we have some derp faces joining our military over here, but we might need to use that button from time to time. So, that's one thing that we can do over here. It increases by drilling units or recruiting generals, but, oh, there you go, or decreases if you recruit mercenaries. So, we can drill units is a new feature over here. There's a button here. We need it. We need a leader for that. So, first of all, I'm going to go ahead and recruit a general which gives you 1% army professionalism. Excellent, so we'll do that. Um, oh, I see. I was misreading this. When you recruit a general, you get plus 1% army professionalism. When you recruit a mercenary, you lose uh, professionalism. Okay, I thought it was as this changed those things. That makes so much more sense um, and is a perfectly good tooltip, but also kind of understandable why I might read that wrong. Um, so yeah, recruiting generals goes up, recruiting mercenaries, this goes down. So now that we have a general in charge of this army, we've got this button to do army drilling. So when you do this, it does drop your morale. As far as I know, um, yeah, drops your morale. You can see the maximum 0.5. I believe this is the same as what would happen if you drop your maintenance down to zero. Okay, so you, you still get no morale, just as if you had no maintenance. And we've seen that before. But it when an army is drilling, no matter where your maintenance bar is, this army is, is charging you its full maintenance value. And we can see that in a tooltip over here. You can see that drilling army is costing us 2.99. If I bring the meter up over here, um, I don't think we're double paying. Let's actually find out. Yeah, there you go. You can see the drilling armies goes to zero, but we're still paying 
uh, 18, and if we start drilling, it's still 11.18 with the drilling army. But the army cost, the first meter went down. So we're not paying normal maintenance for this one, we're paying drilling maintenance for this one. What's the bonus of drilling? Well, we've got a bar here for every troop army drill. This regiment has, well, currently basically zero army drill out of a maximum of 100. Army drill, and you can see the army drill as an average of this entire army as well. Army drill will give us bonuses in combat. I don't know if they're listed somewhere in here. I don't see it. Maybe as the drilling amount gets a little higher. There we go. Thank you. Um, so we now have 1.66% army drill. And you can see this is giving us a tiny boost to land fire damage, shock damage. We take less fire damage and we take less shock damage. So your troops are just better. They do more damage. They take less damage. It's basically like some free discipline is what this turns into, which totally makes sense. Because the concept of discipline, like just conceptually, discipline... Drilling an army, shouldn't that raise your discipline? That's basically what's happening here. So by spending the money and investing, you can get that up. Now, as a, a, any individual army gets reinforced, it does drop the drill because these are new recruits coming in. So after you've taken a bunch of losses and reset things, um, you're going to have to keep you know drilling fairly regularly to do this. Um, but that is... A new meter and a new way to get more and more and more powerful if you're willing to invest in things which i think is kind of cool um yeah all right you guys are doing some stuff let's go away uh i don't think there's anything else new on this screen so yeah professionalism bar the recruiting standards i think that's all uh subject screen i don't believe has changed and the estates change the screen um there is a new set of interactions for if you have um non-muslims in your country you get that that fourth estate as a muslim um they've changed the interactions for there uh i don't unfortunately have an example i'm wondering if the ottomans if i'd load it up as the ottomans if we might be able to do that if i knew the console commands for like tag switching um i would do that but i don't know what like the auto code is I suppose i could uh, just pop back to the main menu or something like that and take a look and see if we can interact with the new estate over there. So, anyway, uh, while that's loading, I will be doing an actual Let's Play of EU4 again in the future, and I, I will probably play something here in the Middle East. I might even play as the Mamluks. I've, I don't think I've ever played as the Mamluks, and that might be kind of fun. We get to mess with their new uh, government type. I'm not doing that now, though, because I am planning on playing some Crusader Kings 2 with Jade Dragon. So, and it's hard to do more than one Let's Play at the same time. All right, let's see if the Ottomans have that other group. Um, I don't know if their government is different. Oh, yes, that's right. There are some changes here. Um, the Ottoman government allows you to assign states to Pashas. Pasha greatly reduces state maintenance cost and a chance of revolt, but will increase the cost of constructions there. We also have a completely new Janissaries um a mechanic over here instead of being a countrywide modifier now you recruit janissar janissaries from heathen provinces special type of unit that receives lower shock and fire damage but costs you more to maintain and military power to recruit i think it costs you like 50 military power to recruit a janissary unit but yeah they take less damage they're pretty potent um let's take a look at our state screen which is what i was going to peek here um Impose religious tax. Ah, uh, there was something. But again, it was reliant on the dev diaries, and I don't have that open right now. I thought there was something new. Um, the Ottoman government, I did mention, though, is one of those where if the Ottomans get obliterated, you can go and um, retake this area, and you'll have a special button to click for that. I don't know if there's anything else specific to note. Um, what countries, what provinces? So can we recruit a Janissary from, say, here, right? You are heathen. So... How do we actually try to recruit a Janissary? I don't know. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry. I don't know how to recruit the Janissaries. Uh, 
I mean, there's bound to be something somewhere. Uh, can I do it from the build screen? Maybe, maybe it's still something we have to unlock. That may, in fact, be the case. Oh yeah, the, there's a new button here for the exploit development that lets you, like, rip down um, the development of the province to get a boost. Still seems, like, kind of insane to me, but I guess it's fine. Like, I, I, this, I don't think this is a very hard thing to, like, add to the game, and I guess it gives you some emergency buttons. I mean, you can get a crap ton of money from some of these rich provinces, and, you know, as an emergency button, maybe? I don't know. It's a little hard to, to imagine a situation where you'd want to do it, but there we have it. Anywho, we're going to wrap up this uh, little uh, look at over here. And again, we will be doing an EO4 series in the future and uh, probably running something over here. If you've got a good suggestion for a cool country to play as, let me know. I mean, we could try Yemen again. They start with like a million like cores over here on their neighbors, but kind of a weak position to actually get anything going on. And the Mamluks might be a lot of fun. I like the extra buttons. I like their Sultan mechanic. I kind of want to explore that and see how it goes. Um, on the other hand, I've never played as the Ottomans either. And maybe, you know, we want to do that and actually play with the new Janissaries mechanic. We'll see. But thank you very much for watching, folks, and I will see you guys next time.